Australia is one of the most multicultural nations in the world. But it's a different story in the country's politics, where 96% of federal lawmakers are white. With this year's election, political parties did have a window to slightly improve this. But they chose not to in most cases, critics say. Tu Le grew up the child of Vietnamese refugees in Fowler, a southwest Sydney electorate far from the city's beaches, and one of the poorest urban areas in the country. The 30 year old works as a community lawyer for refugees and migrants newly arrived to the area. Last year, she was pre selected by the Labour Party to run in the nation's most multicultural seat. But then party bosses side lined her for a white woman. It would take Christina Kennelly four hours on public transport, ferry, train, bus, and another bus, to get to Fowler from her home in Sydney's northern beaches, where she lived on an island. Furious locals questioned what ties she had to the area, but as one of Labour's most prominent politicians, she was granted the traditionally Labour voting seat. Ms. La only learned she'd been replaced on the night newspapers went to print with the story. I was conveniently left off the invitation to the party meeting the next day, she told. Despite backlash, including a Facebook group where locals campaigned to stop Ms. Kennelly's appointment, Labour pushed through the deal. If this scenario had played out in Britain or the United States, it would not be acceptable, says Dr. Tim Sutfamasane, director of the Sydney Policy Lab and Australia's former race discrimination commissioner. But in Australia, there is a sense that you can still maintain the status quo with very limited social and political consequences. At least one in five Australians have a non European background and speak a language at home other than English. According to the last census in 2016, some 49% of the population was born or has a parent who was born overseas. In the past 20 years, migrants from Australia's Asian neighbours have eclipsed those from the UK. But the parliament looks almost as white as it did in the days of the White Australia policy, when from 1901 to the 1970s, the nation banned non white immigrants. We simply do not see our multicultural character represented in anything remotely close to proportionate form in our political institutions, says Dr. Sutfamasane. Compared to other Western multicultural democracies, Australia also lags far behind. The numbers below include Indigenous Australians, who did not gain suffrage until the 1960s, and only saw their first lower house MP elected in 2010. Non white candidates often acknowledge that any progress was first made by Aboriginal Australians. Two decades ago, Australia and the UK had comparably low representation. But UK political parties, responding to campaigns from diverse members, pledged to act on the problem. The British Conservative Party is currently light years ahead of either of the major Australian political parties when it comes to race and representation, says Dr. Sutfamasane. Observers say Australia's political system is more closed door than other democracies. Nearly all candidates chosen by the major parties tend to be members who've risen through the ranks. Often they've worked as staffers to existing MPs. Ms. Le said she'd have no way into the political class if she hadn't been sponsored by Fowler's retiring MP, a white, older male. Labour has taken small structural steps recently. Passing commitments in a state caucus last year, and selecting two Chinese Australian candidates for winnable seats in Sydney. But it was one step forward and two steps back, says party member and activist Osman Chu, when just weeks after the backlash to Ms. Lee's case, Labour parachuted in another white candidate to a multicultural heartland. Andrew Charlton, a former advisor to ex PM Kevin Rudd, Lived in a harbour mansion in Sydney's east where he ran a consultancy. His selection scuppered the anticipated races of at least three diverse candidates from the area, which has large Indian and Chinese diasporas.